Jasmine Williams clutched her backpack straps tightly as she stood before the imposing brick facade of Westfield High School. The autumn breeze rustled through the trees lining the parking lot, carrying with it a chill that seemed to mirror the knot of anxiety in her stomach. At just 14 years old, Jasmine was about to start her junior year of high school, having skipped two grades due to her exceptional academic abilities. As she took a deep breath and climbed the steps to the main entrance, Jasmine couldn't help but feel like an outsider. Not only was she younger than her classmates, but she was also one of the few black students in this predominantly white school district. Her parents had fought hard to get her into Westfield, believing it would provide the best opportunities for their gifted daughter. But as Jasmine pushed open the heavy doors and stepped into the bustling hallway, she wondered if they had made the right choice. The corridor was a cacophony of slamming lockers, squeaking sneakers, and excited chatter as students reunited after summer break. Jasmine weaved through the crowd, her eyes darting from one unfamiliar face to another, searching for a friendly smile or a welcoming gesture. Finding none, she pulled out her schedule and squinted at the room numbers, trying to locate her first class. Watch where you're going, a voice snapped as Jasmine accidentally bumped into someone. She looked up to see a tall, blonde girl glaring down at her. What are you, like, 12? Are you lost or something? Jasmine felt her cheeks burn as she stammered an apology. I, I'm sorry. I'm new here, and I'm just trying to find my class. The blonde girl rolled her eyes and turned to her friends, who had gathered around to watch the exchange. Great, they're letting babies into high school now. As the group walked away laughing, Jasmine blinked back tears and hurried down the hall. She finally found her classroom and slipped inside, choosing a seat near the back. As other students filed in, she noticed their curious glances and whispered comments. Jasmine sank lower in her chair, wishing she could disappear. The bell rang, and a middle-aged white man with thinning hair and wire-rimmed glasses strode into the room. "'Good morning, class,' he announced, his voice carrying a hint of irritation. "'I'm Mr. Hartley, and this is Advanced Placement U, S. History.' If you're not supposed to be here, now's the time to leave. His gaze swept across the room, lingering for a moment on Jasmine. She sat up straighter, meeting his eyes with determination. She belonged here, even if no one else believed it yet. Mr. Hartley began taking attendance, calling out names in a monotone voice. When he reached Jasmine's name, he paused, frowning at his list. Jasmine Williams? He asked, looking around the room. Jasmine raised her hand. Here, sir. Mr. Hartley's eyebrows shot up as he regarded her with obvious skepticism. You're Jasmine Williams? Are you sure you're in the right class, young lady? A few snickers rippled through the room. Jasmine felt her face grow hot, but she kept her voice steady. Yes, sir. I'm in the right place. The teacher's lips thinned into a tight line. See me after class, Miss Williams. We'll sort this out then. As Mr. Hartley launched into his lecture, Jasmine tried to focus on taking notes, but she could feel the weight of her classmates' stares. She had known this wouldn't be easy, but she hadn't expected to face such blatant doubt on her very first day. When the bell rang, signaling the end of class, Jasmine approached Mr. Hartley's desk with trepidation. He looked up from his papers, his expression a mix of annoyance and disbelief. "'Miss Williams?' he began, his tone clipped. There seems to be some mistake. This is an advanced placement course for juniors and seniors. You appear to be much too young. I'm 14, sir, Jasmine interrupted, her voice quiet but firm. I skipped two grades. My transcripts should explain everything. Mr. Hartley's frown deepened. 14? And you expect me to believe you're qualified for this level of coursework? Jasmine felt a flicker of anger beneath her nervousness. I've always excelled in history, sir. I scored a five on the AP World History exam last year. Did you now? Mr. Hartley's tone dripped with sarcasm. And I suppose you wrote a dissertation on quantum physics in your spare time. Jasmine bit her lip, fighting back tears of frustration. Sir, I know I'm younger than the other students, but I've earned my place here. If you'd just look at my records, that won't be necessary. Mr. Hartley cut her off, standing up. I've seen enough. This class is clearly beyond your capabilities, and I won't have you disrupting the learning environment for serious students. 
I'm recommending you be placed in a more appropriate course. You can pick up your new schedule from the guidance office. Jasmine felt as if the floor had dropped out from beneath her. But sir, please. That will be all, Miss Williams, Mr. Hartley said dismissively, turning away from her. Good day. Stunned and heartbroken, Jasmine stumbled out of the classroom. She leaned against the wall, trying to catch her breath as tears blurred her vision. How could this be happening? She had worked so hard to get here, only to be dismissed without even a chance to prove herself. As she stood there, struggling to regain her composure, she heard a gentle voice beside her. Hey, are you okay? Jasmine looked up to see a kind-faced Asian girl watching her with concern. The girl introduced herself as Mei Chen, a fellow junior. I couldn't help overhearing what happened in there, Mei said softly. That wasn't right, Mr. Hartley had no business treating you like that. Jasmine wiped her eyes, grateful for the unexpected kindness. I don't know what to do, she confessed. I belong in that class, but he won't even give me a chance. May's expression hardened with determination. Then we'll make him give you a chance. Come on, let's go talk to Principal Dawson. This isn't over yet. As they walked towards the administrative offices, Jasmine felt a small spark of hope ignite in her chest. She had come too far to give up now. With May by her side, she squared her shoulders and prepared to fight for her rightful place at Westfield High. Are you ready? May asked as they approached the principal's office. Jasmine took a deep breath, steeling herself for the battle ahead. As ready as I'll ever be, she replied, reaching for the door handle. Jasmine reached for the door handle, her hand trembling slightly. As ready as I'll ever be, she replied to May. As they stepped into the office, the secretary looked up from her computer, eyebrows raised. Can I help you girls? May spoke up, her voice steady and confident. We need to speak with Principal Dawson. It's urgent. The secretary glanced at the clock, then back at the two students. He's in a meeting right now. If you'd like to wait, please, Jasmine interrupted, her voice barely above a whisper. It's really important. Something in Jasmine's tone must have conveyed the gravity of the situation, because the secretary's expression softened. She picked up the phone and had a brief, hushed conversation before nodding to the girls. Go on in. He'll see you now. Principal Dawson was a tall, broad-shouldered man with salt-and-pepper hair and a perpetual frown etched into his forehead. He looked up as Jasmine and May entered, his eyes narrowing slightly. What's this about? I was in the middle of something important. Jasmine felt her courage falter, but May placed a supportive hand on her shoulder. Taking a deep breath, Jasmine launched into her story, explaining how Mr. Hartley had dismissed her from the AP history class without even looking at her records. As she spoke, Principal Dawson's frown deepened. When she finished, he leaned back in his chair, regarding her with a mixture of skepticism and curiosity. That's quite a story, Miss Williams, but surely you can understand Mr. Hartley's concern. AP classes are rigorous, and at your age... With all due respect, sir, May interjected, Jasmine's age shouldn't matter. What matters is her ability, which Mr. Hartley refused to even consider. Principal Dawson's gaze shifted to May, his expression hardening. And you are? May Chen, sir. I'm in the same AP history class, and I witnessed how unfairly Jasmine was treated. The principal sighed, rubbing his temples. I look, girls, I appreciate your concern, but these decisions are not made lightly. Mr. Hartley is an experienced educator, and if he feels, then let me prove myself, Jasmine said, surprising herself with the strength in her voice. Give me a chance to show that I belong in that class. If I can't keep up, I'll leave voluntarily. But please, don't dismiss me without even trying. Principal Dawson studied Jasmine for a long moment, his expression unreadable. Finally, he nodded slowly. All right, Miss Williams, I'll make you a deal. You can stay in the AP history class for two weeks. At the end of that time, you'll take a comprehensive exam covering everything the class has learned so far. If you pass, and I mean really pass, not just scrape by, you can stay. If not, You'll be moved to a regular history class. Agreed. 
Jasmine's heart raced. Two weeks wasn't much time, but it was a chance. She nodded eagerly. Yes, sir. Thank you. As they left the office, May squeezed Jasmine's arm excitedly. You did it. Now we just need to make sure you ace that test. Jasmine's elation faded slightly as reality set in. But how? Mr. Hartley clearly doesn't want me there, and I've already missed the first class. May's eyes sparkled with determination. Leave that to me. Meet me in the library after school. We're going to form a study group like this school has never seen before. For the rest of the day, Jasmine felt like she was walking on eggshells. In each class, she could feel the curious stares of her classmates, hear the whispered comments about her age. But she held her head high, determined not to let their judgment affect her. When she returned to Mr. Hartley's class the next day, he didn't bother to hide his displeasure. I see you're still with us, Miss Williams, he said coldly as she took her seat. We'll see how long that lasts. Throughout the lesson, Mr. Hartley seemed to go out of his way to try and trip Jasmine up, peppering her with difficult questions and barely concealing his surprise when she answered correctly. But Jasmine refused to be intimidated. She had fought for this chance, and she wasn't going to waste it. After school, Jasmine made her way to the library, where she found May already setting up at a large table. To her surprise, several other students were there as well. Jasmine, May waved her over. I'd like you to meet our study group. This is Alex, Zoe, and Tyler. They're all in our AP history class, and they've agreed to help. Jasmine looked at the group in amazement. Alex, a lanky boy with glasses, gave her a shy smile. Zoe, a girl with vibrant purple hair, nodded in greeting. Tyler, an athletic-looking guy with kind eyes, pulled out a chair for her. We heard what happened with Mr. Hartley, Zoe said, her voice filled with indignation. It's total bull. We want to help you show him what you can do. Overwhelmed by their support, Jasmine felt tears prick her eyes. Thank you, she whispered. I don't know what to say. Say you're ready to work your butt off, Tyler grinned, because we've got a lot of ground to cover in two weeks. And work they did. Every day after school, the group met in the library, poring over textbooks, quizzing each other, and debating historical events. Jasmine was in her element, her passion for history shining through as she eagerly absorbed everything they threw at her. As the days passed, Jasmine began to feel more comfortable at Westfield. Her study group became her friends, supporting her not just academically but emotionally as well. They sat together at lunch, shared jokes between classes, and stood up for her when other students made snide comments about her age. But Mr. Hartley remained a constant challenge. He seemed determined to prove that Jasmine didn't belong, calling on her more than any other student and barely hiding his frustration when she answered correctly. Jasmine refused to let him see how much it bothered her, but there were nights when she cried herself to sleep, wondering if she'd ever truly be accepted. One day, about a week into her trial period, Jasmine arrived at class to find a substitute teacher. Mr. Hartley was out sick, and in his place was Dr. Angela Carter, a young black woman with a warm smile and sharp, intelligent eyes. As Dr. Carter began the lesson, Jasmine felt herself relax for the first time in that classroom. The substitute's teaching style was engaging and inclusive, encouraging discussion and critical thinking. When Jasmine raised her hand to contribute, Dr. Carter's eyes lit up with interest. Excellent point, Jasmine, she said after Jasmine had finished speaking. You've clearly given this a lot of thought. Can you expand on how that perspective might have influenced the events we're discussing? For the rest of the class, Jasmine found herself fully engaged in a level of historical discourse she'd only dreamed of. As the bell rang, signaling the end of the period, Dr. Carter called Jasmine to her desk. I have to say, I'm impressed, Dr. Carter said, her voice warm with admiration. Your understanding of these complex historical concepts is remarkable, especially for someone your age. Jasmine felt a surge of pride, followed quickly by a wave of sadness. Thank you, Dr. Carter. I just wish... I wish Mr. Hartley could see it that way. Dr. Carter's expression turned serious. Jasmine, I want you to listen to me carefully. You have a gift, and you deserve to be in this class just as much as anyone else. Don't let anyone make you doubt that, not even your teacher. 
As Jasmine left the classroom, she felt a new sense of determination. Dr. Carter's words had rekindled the fire inside her. She was going to prove herself, not just to Mr. Hartley or Principal Dawson, but to herself. The next week flew by in a blur of studying and preparation. Before Jasmine knew it, the day of her comprehensive exam had arrived. As she sat at her desk, staring at the sealed test booklet, she took a deep breath and thought of everyone who had supported her. Her parents, May, her study group, and Dr. Carter. You've got this, she whispered to herself as she picked up her pencil. Three hours later, Jasmine emerged from the classroom, exhausted but quietly confident. She had given it her all, and now all she could do was wait for the results. Two days later, Jasmine was called to Principal Dawson's office. As she entered, she saw Mr. Hartley standing next to the principal's desk, his face unreadable. Principal Dawson cleared his throat. Miss Williams, we've reviewed your exam results, and I have to say, Jasmine held her breath, her heart pounding in her chest. Principal Dawson cleared his throat. Miss Williams, we've reviewed your exam results, and I have to say, they're extraordinary. You scored a perfect 100%. Jasmine's eyes widened in disbelief. She had hoped to do well, but this, this was beyond her wildest dreams. Mr. Hartley shifted uncomfortably beside the desk, his face a mixture of surprise and something else Jasmine couldn't quite identify. Was it shame? Regret? I... I don't know what to say, Jasmine stammered, her voice barely above a whisper. Principal Dawson leaned forward a hint of a smile playing at the corners of his mouth. You don't need to say anything, Miss Williams. Your performance speaks for itself. You've more than earned your place in the AP history class. Jasmine felt a wave of relief wash over her, followed quickly by a surge of pride. She had done it. She had proven herself. Mr. Hartley cleared his throat, drawing Jasmine's attention. Miss Williams, he began, his voice strained. I owe you an apology. I made assumptions based on your age and... Other factors. I was wrong, and I'm sorry. Jasmine studied her teacher's face, searching for signs of insincerity. Finding none, she nodded slowly. Thank you, Mr. Hartley. I appreciate that. As Jasmine left the office, her mind was whirling. She had won her battle, but somehow, it felt hollow. Yes, she had proven herself academically, but why had she needed to in the first place? Why had Mr. Hartley and others been so quick to doubt her abilities? These questions plagued Jasmine as she made her way through the crowded hallway. She was so lost in thought that she almost didn't notice the commotion up ahead until she heard a familiar voice raised in anger. You can't just ignore this. It's not right. Jasmine rounded the corner to find May standing toe to toe with Mr. Thompson, the school's vice principal. May's face was flushed with anger while Mr. Thompson looked increasingly uncomfortable. What's going on? Jasmine asked, approaching the pair cautiously. May turned, her eyes lighting up when she saw Jasmine. Oh good, you're here. Tell him, Jasmine. Tell him about how Mr. Hartley treated you. Mr. Thompson raised an eyebrow, looking at Jasmine with newfound interest. Miss Williams, is there something you'd like to report? Jasmine hesitated her earlier conversation with Principal Dawson and Mr. Hartley fresh in her mind. I, well, there was a misunderstanding at first, but it's been resolved now. Mr. Hartley apologized. May's jaw dropped. Apologized, Jasmine. He tried to kick you out of class without even giving you a chance. One apology doesn't erase that. As May continued to argue her point, Jasmine noticed a small crowd gathering around them. Some students were nodding in agreement with May, while others looked confused or defensive. Ladies, please, Mr. Thompson said, holding up his hands. This is not the time or place for this discussion. If you have concerns, you can make an appointment to discuss them in private. But May wasn't backing down. No, this needs to be addressed now. It's not just about Jasmine. How many other students have been unfairly judged or dismissed because of their race or age? How many others have been too afraid to speak up? Jasmine felt a knot forming in her stomach. She knew May was right, but the thought of becoming the center of a school-wide controversy made her want to disappear. She had just wanted to fit in, to be accepted. Was that too much to ask? 
As the tension in the hallway continued to build, a new voice cut through the noise. What's going on here? Jasmine turned to see Dr. Carter approaching, her brow furrowed with concern. Mr. Thompson sighed with relief. Dr. Carter, perhaps you can help. These students seem to have some concerns about our faculty's treatment of minority students. Dr. Carter's eyes narrowed as she looked from May to Jasmine, then back to Mr. Thompson. I see. And instead of listening to these concerns, you're trying to sweep them under the rug, Mr. Thompson sputtered, clearly taken aback by Dr. Carter's directness. Now, that's not what I... It's exactly what you're doing, Dr. Carter interrupted. She turned to address the gathered students. This is an important conversation, one that deserves to be heard. But the middle of the hallway isn't the place for it. She paused, considering for a moment. How about this? Anyone who wants to discuss these issues, meet in the auditorium after school today. We'll create a safe space for open dialogue. A murmur of agreement rippled through the crowd. Jasmine felt a mix of anxiety and excitement. This was bigger than just her now. It was a chance for real change. As the crowd dispersed and Jasmine headed to her next class, she felt a hand on her shoulder. It was Dr. Carter. Are you okay? The teacher asked, her voice filled with genuine concern. Jasmine nodded slowly. I think so. It's just a lot to process. Dr. Carter smiled sympathetically. I know it is, but remember, Jasmine, you're not alone in this. What you've experienced, what you're feeling, it's valid. And it's important. As Jasmine sat through her remaining classes that day, her mind kept drifting to the upcoming meeting. What would happen? Would people actually show up? And if they did, would it make any difference? When the final bell rang, Jasmine made her way to the auditorium with trepidation. To her surprise, the room was already half full when she arrived. She spotted May waving her over to a seat in the front row. Can you believe this turnout? May whispered excitedly as Jasmine sat down. I think we might actually be able to make some real changes. Jasmine nodded, still feeling overwhelmed. She scanned the room, taking in the diverse group of students and even a few teachers who had gathered. Her eyes landed on Mr. Hartley, sitting near the back, his expression unreadable. Dr. Carter stepped onto the stage, her presence immediately commanding attention. Uh, thank you all for coming, she began, her voice strong and clear. We're here today to have an open and honest discussion about race, prejudice, and equity in our school. This isn't about pointing fingers or assigning blame. It's about listening, learning, and working together to create a better environment for everyone. As Dr. Carter spoke, Jasmine felt something shift inside her. The fear and anxiety that had been weighing her down began to lift, replaced by a growing sense of purpose. This was her chance to turn her painful experience into something positive, to help ensure that no other student would have to go through what she did. When Dr. Carter asked for volunteers to share their experiences, Jasmine found herself raising her hand. As she stepped onto the stage, she took a deep breath, looking out at the sea of faces before her. She saw curiosity, empathy, and even some discomfort. But most importantly, she saw people who were willing to listen. My name is Jasmine Williams, she began, her voice shaky at first but growing stronger with each word. And this is my story. As Jasmine recounted her experiences, the doubt, the dismissal, the need to prove herself beyond what was asked of any other student, she saw heads nodding in recognition. She wasn't alone. Others had felt this too. When she finished speaking, there was a moment of silence before the auditorium erupted in applause. Jasmine felt tears pricking at her eyes, but for the first time in weeks, they were tears of relief and hope rather than frustration and pain. As she returned to her seat, Dr. Carter took the stage again. Thank you, Jasmine, for your bravery and sharing your story. Now, who else would like to speak? One by one, students and even a few teachers came forward to share their experiences. Stories of microaggressions, of feeling invisible or hypervisible, of having to work twice as hard to be taken half as seriously. But there were also stories of allies, of moments of understanding and growth. As the meeting progressed, Jasmine found herself fully engaged, taking notes and even offering suggestions when Dr. Carter opened the floor for ideas on how to address these issues. The energy in the room was palpable, 
a mix of determination, hope, and the shared understanding that change was not only possible but necessary. As the meeting drew to a close, Dr. Carter addressed the group one final time. This is just the beginning, she said, her voice filled with passion. We've started an important conversation today, but it can't end here. I'm proposing the formation of a diversity and inclusion committee made up of students, teachers, and administrators. Together, we can work to create real, lasting change in our school community. The proposal was met with enthusiastic applause as people began to file out of the auditorium, discussing what they'd heard and making plans to get involved, Jasmine felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned to find Mr. Hartley standing behind her, his expression somber. Miss Williams, he began, his voice low. I wanted to thank you for sharing your story. I, I realize now that my actions had a much deeper impact than I understood. I have a lot to learn, and I'm committed to doing better. Jasmine studied her teacher's face, seeing genuine remorse and a willingness to change. She nodded slowly. Thank you, Mr. Hartley. That means a lot. As Mr. Hartley walked away, May bounced up to Jasmine, her eyes shining with excitement. Can you believe it? We did it. We actually got people talking. Jasmine smiled, feeling a warmth spreading through her chest. We did, she agreed. But this is just the beginning. As they left the auditorium together, Jasmine felt a newfound sense of purpose. She had come to Westfield hoping to fit in, to be accepted. But now she realized that she had the power to do something even more important, to help create a community where everyone could feel accepted, valued, and heard. The road ahead wouldn't be easy, she knew. Change never was. But as she looked around at the energized faces of her classmates and teachers, Jasmine felt for the first time since starting at Westfield, that she was exactly where she was meant to be. Just so, May said as they pushed through the school doors into the crisp evening air. Ready to change the world? Jasmine grinned, linking her arm through May's. One step at a time, she replied. But yeah, I think I am. The weeks following the diversity meeting were a whirlwind of activity for Jasmine. As one of the key voices that had sparked the conversation, she found herself at the center of Westfield High's newfound commitment to inclusion and equality. The Diversity and Inclusion Committee, spearheaded by Dr. Carter, was taking shape, and Jasmine had been asked to serve as one of the student representatives. On a crisp autumn afternoon, Jasmine made her way to the library for the committee's first official meeting. As she pushed open the heavy wooden doors, she was greeted by a sight that made her heart swell with hope a diverse group of students, teachers, and administrators, all gathered around a large table, eager to begin their work. Dr. Carter stood at the head of the table, her warm smile a beacon of encouragement. Welcome, everyone, she began, her voice filled with quiet enthusiasm. I'm thrilled to see so many of you here today. Before we dive in, I'd like us all to introduce ourselves and share why we've chosen to be part of this committee. As the introductions made their way around the table, Jasmine was struck by the variety of experiences and perspectives represented. There was Mr. Hartley, his usually stern face softened by a look of genuine interest as he listened to others speak. May was there too, of course, her eyes shining with determination. But there were also faces Jasmine didn't recognize. A Latina girl who spoke passionately about her family's immigrant experience a Muslim boy who shared stories of feeling isolated during Ramadan, and even a white student who admitted to his own ignorance and desire to learn and do better. When it was Jasmine's turn to speak, she took a deep breath, feeling the weight of expectation on her shoulders. I'm Jasmine Williams, she began, her voice stronger than she expected. I'm here because I've experienced firsthand how damaging prejudice and low expectations can be. But I'm also here because I've seen how powerful it can be when people come together to create change. I want to be part of making Westfield a place where every student feels valued and supported, regardless of their race, age, or background. As the meeting progressed, ideas flowed freely. Proposals ranged from curriculum changes to include more diverse perspectives in history and literature classes, to cultural awareness workshops for faculty and staff, to a mentorship program pairing upperclassmen with incoming freshmen from underrepresented groups. 
Jasmine found herself fully engaged, offering suggestions and building on others, ideas. As she spoke about the importance of representation in advanced classes, she caught Mr. Hartley's eye. To her surprise, he nodded in agreement, a look of dawning understanding on his face. As the meeting drew to a close, Dr. Carter addressed the group one final time. This is an excellent start, she said, her voice filled with pride. But remember, our real work begins now. It's not enough to talk about change. We need to be the change. I want each of you to take what we've discussed today and start implementing it in your daily lives at Westfield. And don't be afraid to call out injustice when you see it, respectfully but firmly. As the committee members filed out of the library, chatting excitedly about their plans, Jasmine felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned to find Mr. Hartley standing behind her, an uncharacteristic look of uncertainty on his face. Miss Williams, he began, his voice low. I was wondering if you might have a moment to speak with me privately. Jasmine hesitated for a moment, then nodded. Of course, Mr. Hartley. They made their way to a quiet corner of the library, where Mr. Hartley took a deep breath before speaking. Jasmine, I owe you more than just an apology. I owe you an explanation and a promise. Jasmine waited, her heart pounding in her chest. When I first saw you in my class, Mr. Hartley continued, I made assumptions based on, well, based on prejudices I didn't even realize I had. I've always prided myself on being a fair teacher, but this experience has shown me that I have a lot of work to do. He paused, running a hand through his thinning hair. I want you to know that I'm committed to doing that work. I've signed up for several of the cultural competency workshops Dr. Carter mentioned, and I'm reevaluating my entire approach to teaching. I can't change what happened, but I can promise you that I'll do everything in my power to ensure it never happens again to you or any other student. Jasmine felt a lump forming in her throat. She hadn't expected this level of vulnerability from her usually stoic teacher. Thank you, Mr. Hartley, she said softly. That means a lot to me. As they parted ways, Jasmine felt a weight lifting from her shoulders. It wasn't just about her anymore. Real change was happening, and she was part of it. Over the next few months, Jasmine watched with pride as the initiatives proposed by the Diversity and Inclusion Committee began to take shape. The mentorship program was particularly close to her heart. As one of the top students in her year, she had been paired with a freshman named Zaria, a brilliant young girl who reminded Jasmine of herself just a few years ago. I can't believe I'm really here, Zaria confessed during one of their weekly meetings. Sometimes I feel like I don't belong, like everyone's just waiting for me to mess up. Jasmine smiled sympathetically. I know exactly how you feel, she said. But trust me, you belong here just as much as anyone else. And you've got something they don't. You've got me in your corner. As the semester progressed, Jasmine found herself juggling her rigorous coursework with her committee responsibilities and mentorship duties. It was challenging, but she had never felt more fulfilled. She was excelling in her classes, including Mr. Hartley's AP History, where she now felt comfortable speaking up and sharing her insights. One day, as she was leaving class, Mr. Hartley called her back. Jasmine, I wanted to let you know that I've recommended you for the National History Honors Society, he said, a hint of pride in his voice. Your work this semester has been exceptional. Jasmine beamed, feeling a surge of validation. Thank you, Mr. Hartley. That means a lot coming from you. As she turned to leave, Mr. Hartley spoke again. And Jasmine, thank you for teaching me as much as I've taught you this year. The impact of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee's work was becoming evident throughout Westfield. The hallways seemed livelier, filled with a greater mix of voices and languages. In the cafeteria, lunch tables that had once been segregated by unspoken rules were now more integrated, with students from different backgrounds mingling and sharing stories. Even the curriculum was changing. In English class, Jasmine was thrilled to see works by authors of color being given equal prominence alongside the traditional canon. In history, Mr. Hartley had expanded his lessons to include perspectives that had long been overlooked or minimized. 
But perhaps the most significant change was in the attitudes of the students themselves. Jasmine noticed a new awareness, a willingness to listen and learn from each other's experiences. Conversations about race, identity, and equality that would have once been awkward or avoided altogether were now taking place openly and respectfully. Of course, it wasn't all smooth sailing. There were still incidents of insensitivity or outright prejudice. But now, instead of being swept under the rug, these incidents were addressed head on. Students and teachers alike were learning to be allies, to speak up when they witnessed injustice. As the school year drew to a close, Jasmine found herself reflecting on how much had changed since that first day when she had stood outside Westfield's imposing facade, feeling small and out of place. She was no longer just trying to fit in. She had become a leader, a voice for change. The last day of school arrived, bringing with it a bittersweet mix of emotions. As Jasmine cleaned out her locker, she felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned to find May, Zaria, and a group of other students from the Diversity and Inclusion Committee gathered behind her. We wanted to thank you, May said, her eyes shining with gratitude. Now for being brave enough to speak up, for pushing us all to do better. Zaria stepped forward, holding out a small gift bag. We got you something, she said shyly, to remember this year by. Jasmine opened the bag to find a beautiful journal, its cover emblazoned with the words, Changemaker, in bold Haas golden letters. As she flipped through the pages, she saw that each member of the committee had written a personal message of thanks and encouragement. Tears pricked at Jasmine's eyes as she looked up at the group. I don't know what to say, she whispered, except thank you for being on this journey with me, for believing in the possibility of change. As the group hugged and made plans to stay in touch over the summer, Jasmine felt a profound sense of accomplishment. She had come to Westfield hoping to prove herself, to show that she belonged. But she had done so much more than that. She had helped create a community where everyone could belong. As she walked out of Westfield's doors for the last time that year, Jasmine held her head high. The journey wasn't over. There was still so much work to be done. But she was ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. Because now she knew the truth. One voice, raised in pursuit of justice, could start a chorus of change. And as she stepped into the bright summer sunshine, Jasmine Williams was already dreaming of the changes they would make next year, and the year after that, and all the years to come. Two years had passed since that fateful first day at Westfield High, and Jasmine Williams stood once again before the school's imposing facade. But this time, instead of anxiety and uncertainty, she felt a surge of pride and anticipation. It was the first day of her senior year, and so much had changed, both within the school and within herself. As she climbed the familiar steps, Jasmine's mind wandered back to the journey that had brought her here. The struggles, the triumphs, the moments of doubt and breakthrough, all had shaped her into the young woman she was today. No longer the shy, uncertain freshman trying to prove her worth, Jasmine was now a respected leader in the school community, known for her intelligence, compassion, and unwavering commitment to justice. The hallways were buzzing with the excited chatter of students reuniting after summer break. Jasmine smiled as she noticed the vibrant tapestry of faces and cultures represented in the crowd. The Diversity and Inclusion Committee's work over the past two years had transformed Westfield into a more welcoming and representative space for all students. Jasmine, a voice called out. She turned to see Zaria, now a confident junior, waving enthusiastically. Can you believe it? Your last first day. Jasmine laughed, pulling her mentee into a quick hug. I know, it's surreal. But I'm more excited to see what you're going to accomplish this year, ready to take on AP history. Zaria's eyes sparkled with determination. Thanks to you, absolutely. Mr. Hartley's got nothing on me. As if summoned by his name, Mr. Hartley appeared around the corner. His eyes crinkled with genuine warmth as he spotted Jasmine and Zaria. Ah, my two-star students, he said, his tone a far cry from the dismissive one Jasmine had first encountered. I hope you're both ready for a challenging year ahead. You know we are, Mr. Hartley, Jasmine replied with a grin. In fact, Zaria and I were just discussing some ideas for this year's Black History Month program. We were hoping to get your input. 
Mr. Hartley's face lit up with interest. I'd be honored. Why don't you both stop by my classroom after school? We can brainstorm over a cup of tea. As Mr. Hartley continued down the hall, Jasmine couldn't help but marvel at the transformation. The teacher who had once tried to expel her was now one of her strongest allies and mentors. It was a testament to the power of open dialogue and willingness to change. The first assembly of the year was held in the auditorium, and as Jasmine took her seat, she felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned to find Principal Dawson standing beside her, a look of pride on his face. Miss Williams, he said, his voice low but filled with warmth. I was hoping I might have a word with you after the assembly. There's something I'd like to discuss. Curiosity peaked. Jasmine nodded. Of course, Principal Dawson. The assembly proceeded with the usual start of year announcements, but there was a noticeable difference in the tone and content. Diversity and inclusion were woven throughout, from the student speakers chosen to the clubs and initiatives highlighted. When Dr. Carter took the stage to discuss the ongoing work of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, Jasmine felt a swell of pride. This was the change they had worked so hard to create. After the assembly, Jasmine made her way to Principal Dawson's office. As she entered, she was surprised to see Dr. Carter and Mr. Hartley already there, along with a woman she didn't recognize. Jasmine, thank you for joining us, Principal Dawson began, gesturing for her to take a seat. I'd like you to meet Miss Thompson from the State Board of Education. Ms. Thompson smiled warmly at Jasmine. It's a pleasure to meet you, Jasmine. I've heard a lot about you and the incredible work you've done here at Westfield. Jasmine's eyes widened in surprise. Oh, um, thank you. But it's been a team effort, really. Indeed it has, Dr. Carter chimed in. But your leadership has been instrumental, Jasmine. Which is why we've asked you here today. Principal Dawson leaned forward, his expression serious but kind. Jasmine, the changes we've implemented at Westfield over the past two years have not gone unnoticed. The State Board of Education has approached us about piloting a new initiative, one that would see our diversity and inclusion programs implemented in schools across the state. Jasmine's heart raced with excitement. That's amazing. But what does this have to do with me? Ms. Thompson spoke up. We'd like you to be part of the team that develops and presents this program to other schools. Your experience as a student leader in this initiative would be invaluable. For a moment, Jasmine was speechless. The idea that the work they had done at Westfield could have an impact beyond their own halls was overwhelming. But as she looked around at the encouraging faces of her mentors, she felt a surge of determination. I'd be honored, she said finally, her voice strong and clear. When do we start? The next few months were a whirlwind of activity. Balancing her senior year coursework with her responsibilities on the Diversity and Inclusion Committee was challenging enough. But now Jasmine found herself spending weekends and evenings working on the statewide initiative as well. She threw herself into the work with characteristic passion and dedication. Together with Dr. Carter, Mr. Hartley, and a team of educators and administrators from across the state, Jasmine helped develop a comprehensive program that addressed everything from curriculum diversity to teacher training to student support services. But perhaps the most important part of the program, in Jasmine's eyes, was the emphasis on student voices. She insisted that any school implementing the program must have a student-led diversity committee, empowering young people to be active participants in shaping their educational environment. As winter gave way to spring, Jasmine found herself standing before a room full of educators and administrators from across the state, preparing to present the program they had worked so hard to create. For a moment, she felt a flicker of that old nervousness, the fear of not being taken seriously because of her age or race. But then she remembered how far she had come, how much she had overcome. She thought of Zaria and the other students she had mentored, of the changes she had seen at Westfield, of the countless conversations and moments of growth that had brought her to this point. Taking a deep breath, Jasmine began to speak. Her voice was clear and confident as she shared her experiences, the challenges they had faced, and the successes they had achieved. She spoke of the importance of creating inclusive spaces where every student could thrive, of the power of diversity to enrich the educational experience for everyone. As she concluded her presentation, Jasmine looked out at the sea of faces before her. She saw interest, excitement, 
and yes, even some skepticism, but most importantly, she saw the potential for change. This program isn't just about making our schools more diverse, she said, her voice ringing with passion. It's about creating environments where every student feels valued, where every voice is heard, where every mind has the opportunity to reach its full potential. Because when we do that, when we truly embrace the richness of our diversity, we all benefit, we all grow, we all succeed. The room erupted in applause as Jasmine finished speaking. As educators crowded around her, eager to ask questions and share their own experiences, she felt a hand on her shoulder. She turned to find Mr. Hartley standing beside her, his eyes shining with pride. You've come a long way from that first day in my classroom, he said softly. I'm honored to have been a part of your journey. Jasmine smiled, feeling a rush of gratitude for the teacher who had once doubted her, but who had also had the courage to change and grow alongside her. We've all come a long way, she replied, and we've still got so far to go. As she made her way back to her seat, Jasmine caught sight of her reflection in a nearby window. She saw a young woman standing tall, confident in her abilities and secure in her place in the world. But more than that, she saw a changemaker, someone who had not only overcome adversity, but had used her experiences to create positive change for others. The girl who had once stood nervously outside Westfield High, unsure if she belonged, was gone. In her place stood Jasmine Williams, student, leader, advocate. A young woman ready to take on the world and make it a better place for everyone. As she settled back into her seat, already jotting down new ideas sparked by the conversation she'd just had, Jasmine felt a sense of excitement for the future. She knew that the work of creating truly inclusive and equitable schools was far from over. There would be more challenges to face, more barriers to break down. But she was ready, ready to continue learning, growing, and fighting for justice, ready to use her voice to lift up others, ready to be the change she wanted to see in the world. And as she looked around at the room full of educators inspired by her words, Jasmine knew that she was not alone in this fight. Together, they could create a future where no student would ever have to prove their worth based on the color of their skin or the circumstances of their birth. A future where every child would have the opportunity to shine. It was a future worth fighting for. And Jasmine Williams was just getting started. Ten years had passed since Jasmine Williams first stepped into Westfield High School. Now, at 24, she stood before a different set of imposing doors, those of the State Capitol Building. As she adjusted her crisp blazer and took a deep breath, Jasmine couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had brought her here. The statewide diversity initiative she had helped develop in her senior year had been more successful than anyone could have imagined. Schools across the state had implemented the program, and the results were remarkable. Graduation rates for minority students had increased, disciplinary disparities had decreased, and overall student satisfaction and engagement were at an all-time high. But for Jasmine, the most rewarding part had been watching the ripple effects of their work. Students who had been empowered by the program were now becoming teachers, administrators, and community leaders themselves, carrying forward the mission of creating more inclusive and equitable spaces for all. After graduating from Westfield as valedictorian, Jasmine had gone on to college, double majoring in education policy and African-American studies. Her experiences had fueled a passion for systemic change, and she had thrown herself into her studies with the same determination that had characterized her high school years. Now, armed with a master's degree and years of on-the-ground experience working with schools across the state, Jasmine was preparing to testify before the State Education Committee, they were considering legislation that would make the diversity and inclusion programs she had helped pioneer a mandatory part of every school's curriculum. As she waited for her turn to speak, Jasmine's phone buzzed with a text message. It was from Zaria, now a rising star in the world of educational technology. Knock them dead, mentor. We're all rooting for you. Jasmine smiled, feeling a warm glow of pride. Zaria had gone on to develop an app that helped schools track and address equity issues in real time, and it was already being used in districts across the country. The mentorship that had begun in those early days at Westfield had blossomed into a deep friendship and professional collaboration. Another message popped up, this one from Mr. Hartley. Remember, Jasmine, 
You belong in that room just as much as anyone else. More, in fact, your voice matters. Tears pricked at Jasmine's eyes as she read the message. Mr. Hartley had retired from teaching a few years ago, but he had remained in steadfast supporter and mentor. His journey from skeptic to ally had been a powerful reminder of the potential for growth and change in even the most unlikely places. As Jasmine scrolled through her messages, she came across a photo that made her pause. It was a group shot from the last diversity and inclusion committee meeting of her senior year. There she was, surrounded by friends and allies, May, Dr. Carter, Principal Dawson, and so many others who had been part of that transformative time. She zoomed in on her own face in the photo, struck by the contrast between the confident young woman smiling at the camera and the nervous freshman she had once been. The journey hadn't always been easy, but every challenge had helped shape her into the person she was today. Miskas Williams, a voice called, pulling Jasmine from her reverie. They're ready for you now. Taking a deep breath, Jasmine stood and smoothed her blazer one last time. As she walked into the committee room, she felt the weight of responsibility on her shoulders, but it was a weight she was ready to bear. The room fell silent as Jasmine took her place at the podium. She looked out at the sea of faces before her, lawmakers, educators, and community leaders, all waiting to hear what she had to say. In that moment, she thought of all the students like her younger self, facing doubts and discrimination, needing someone to believe in them and fight for their right to an equal education. Good morning, Jasmine began, her voice strong and clear. My name is Jasmine Williams, and I'm here today to speak about the transformative power of inclusive education. As she spoke, Jasmine wove together statistics and personal stories, painting a vivid picture of the impact that comprehensive diversity and inclusion programs could have. She spoke of the students whose lives had been changed, the teachers who had learned to confront their own biases, and the communities that had been strengthened. But more than that, she spoke of the future, a future where every child, regardless of their race, gender, or background, would have the opportunity to reach their full potential. A future where diversity was not just tolerated, but celebrated as a source of strength and innovation. As she concluded her testimony, Jasmine looked each committee member in the eye. The question before you today is not just about a set of programs or policies, she said. It's about what kind of society we want to be. Do we want to be a society that allows talent to go unrecognized and potential to go unfulfilled because of prejudice and low expectations? Or do we want to be a society that nurtures every mind, that sees the genius in every child, that gives every student the chance to shine? She paused, letting her words sink in. I stand before you today as living proof of what can happen when we choose the latter. I urge you to make that choice for every student in our state. Thank you. The room erupted in applause as Jasmine stepped back from the podium. As she made her way back to her seat, she caught sight of a familiar face in the audience. It was Dr. Carter, now the state superintendent of education, beaming with pride. As the hearing continued, Jasmine felt a sense of hope swelling in her chest. She knew that this was just one step in a long journey toward true educational equity. There would be more battles to fight, more minds to change, more systems to reform. But as she listened to the committee members discuss the proposed legislation, Jasmine realized something profound. The work she had begun as a high school student, work that had started from a place of pain and injustice, had grown into something far bigger than herself. It had become a movement, a catalyst for change that was touching lives across the state and beyond. Weeks later, Jasmine stood in the rotunda of the state capitol, surrounded by friends, colleagues, and supporters. The governor was about to sign the Inclusive Education Act into law, making their diversity and inclusion programs a mandatory part of every school's curriculum. As the governor stepped up to the podium, Jasmine felt a hand slip into hers. She turned to see Zaria standing beside her, tears glistening in her eyes. We did it, Zaria whispered. We really did it. Jasmine squeezed her hand, her own eyes filling with tears. No, she said softly. We're just getting started. As the governor's pen touched the paper, signing the bill into law, Jasmine felt a surge of emotion. She thought of her younger self, standing outside Westfield High, feeling small and out of place. She thought of all the students who would now have the support and opportunities she had fought so hard for. 
In that moment, Jasmine Williams made a silent promise to herself and to all those students. She would never stop fighting for equality and justice in education. She would never stop working to create a world where every child could reach their full potential. As the cheers and applause filled the rotunda, Jasmine looked around at the faces of those who had been part of this journey. Dr. Carter, Mr. Hartley, May, Zaria, and so many others. Each of them had played a crucial role in getting to this moment. Each of them had grown and changed along the way. And as she joined in the celebration, Jasmine realized that this was the true power of diversity and inclusion. It wasn't just about making space for different voices. It was about allowing those voices to change us, to challenge us, to make us better. It was about creating a community where everyone could belong, where everyone could thrive. The journey that had begun with a single act of injustice had blossomed into a movement for change that would touch countless lives. And though there was still much work to be done, Jasmine knew that they were on the right path. As the celebration wound down, Jasmine found a quiet moment to herself. She pulled out her phone and opened her journal app, the digital version of the Changemaker journal her friends had given her all those years ago. She began to type. Today, we took a giant step forward, but our work is far from over. There are still minds to open, systems to change, and battles to fight. But I'm ready. We're ready. Because now we know the truth, that when we stand together, when we lift each other up, when we refuse to let anyone be left behind, there's nothing we can't accomplish. To every student out there who's ever felt out of place, who's ever been told they don't belong, who's ever had to fight to be seen and heard, this victory is for you. Your voice matters. Your dreams matter. You matter. And to everyone who's ever doubted, who's ever stood in the way of progress, it's never too late to learn, to grow, to be part of the change. This is just the beginning. Together, we'll build a future where every child can shine, a future where diversity is our strength, inclusion is our norm, and equality is our reality. Let's get to work. As Jasmine finished writing, she looked up to see the Capitol building bathed in the warm glow of the setting sun. She smiled, feeling a sense of peace and purpose wash over her. The journey ahead would be challenging, but she was ready, ready to keep learning, keep growing, keep fighting for what was right, because that's what changemakers do. And Jasmine Williams, the girl who had once been dismissed and underestimated, had become a changemaker of the highest order. As she walked down the Capitol steps, Jasmine's phone buzzed with a new message. It was from a young student she had mentored recently. Miss Williams, I just heard the news. You're my hero. When I grow up, I want to be just like you. Jasmine smiled as she typed her reply, Dream bigger, be yourself, change the world. I believe in you. And with that, Jasmine Williams stepped out into the evening, ready to face whatever challenges tomorrow might bring. Because she knew that as long as there were minds to educate and hearts to inspire, her work would never truly be done. The end and the beginning.